Swift Scholars, it's Professor Gallagher, and in this challenge and solution, this is one of several in-class midterm questions I've given my students on a prior test. This has students create a Wu-Tang-inspired programmer name. That is, a programmer name in the stylings of the names of the members of the rap supergroup, the Wu-Tang Clan. This will be some basic playground work, working with arrays, structs, and loops that every programmer should know. So let's get Swiftin, Wu-Tang style. Now, just so you know where we're headed over the next several questions, the premise is that the Boston College Computer Science Society is going to have their first ever hack and rap showdown. And we'll be producing a competitor list for the battle order for members of our class. We'll create an array of structs that has the student name and the uniquely generated Wu-Tang style coder name. There will be no repeat coder names. We'll randomize the array of structs and we'll print that out in a set list. The inspiration for this is the popular Wu-Tang name generator. There are several versions of this online. Donald Glover, the actor, used this to create his own rap name, Childish Gambino. So you'll create a Wu-Tang name generator with coder-centric names. Now, if you didn't know, Jizza, who's also known as the Genius, a member of the Wu-Tang Clan, is actually a big advocate of STEM education for underrepresented youth. Check this out on YouTube after you've completed the challenge. But for now, let us begin to hack. Now, we'll first create a playground named Wu-Tang. So I'm an Xcode to file new playground, calling this Wu-Tang. And then for our first question, we create an array of strings that we'll call Swift students. And I prepared a list for our current students at this URL. So I'll highlight and copy that URL. Then we'll head to Xcode. I'll enter my question two comment, then create my variable with var Swift students equals open square bracket, head back to my browser, paste in the URL that I copied, highlight and copy all of these strings, return to Xcode, paste the strings in between square brackets, make sure you close with a square bracket, and question number one is done. So now let's check out question number two. We'll add a comment and a print statement for QT, and then we'll print out Swift students, and in the next line of code, we'll print out the name of each Swift student on a separate line. And for full credit, we need to print these using the for each statement. So that should go through all of the Swift students and use just a single line of code to print them all. I show you an example of what the output should look like, so let's code this up. I'll add my Q2 comment, and then as requested, print out Q2 with a line feed after it. And I'm gonna do my line feed with backslash N, the escaped character, in here, then I'll print out Swift students in all caps. Let me increase the font so this is easier to see. And let's see, when I type in Swift students here, am I spelling this right? I am. Code completion isn't working right away. Sometimes that doesn't happen in the Xcode playgrounds. Sometimes if you shift enter and you run your code the first time, then the code completion will kick in better. I still don't have that happening, but I know that my variable is called Swift students, so I'll enter that lower camel case. Then I'll use for each after that with dot for each. And then in between curly braces, I'm gonna say print, passing in dollar sign zero. Remember the dollar sign zero is each individual Swiss student as we iterate through all of the Swiss students in the for each statement. And when we print that out, we get our list of students. Nice work, Swifter. I forgot the two, it's supposed to print Q2 for question two, I'll fix that, and now we're looking good. Now I'll put in the comment for Q3, question three, and let's check that one out. So Q3 has us write a function called Wu-Tang Programmer that takes no parameters but randomly generates and returns a string, which is a Wu-Tang coder name. Now this function initially should include two local strings inside of it used to generate the coder name, one for first names, which is a list of possible first names for the coder name, and the other, which is last name, which is the list of the possible last part of the coder name. Now when called, Wu-Tang Programmer should perform several steps, including randomly select the element from first names, randomly select the element from last names, combine the two into a coder name with a space in between them, and return the generated coder name. You can assume that you always have at least one element in first names and at least one element in last names. Copy and paste the monikers in the list below, but you can add your own if you'd like to initiate a little bit of creativity, but there are no extra points for dope styling. Then call Wu-Tang Programmer as part of a print statement that will print out a statement like the one below. Note for full credit, include the double quotes around the coder name. Substitute your name for the professor's name below. So it says something like, Professor Gallagher, your Wu-Tang programmer name is Terminal Assembler, surrounded by double quotes. So let's conquer this question. First, I'll print out Q3, surrounded by backslash ends. Remember, that's our escape character, so that we get a line feed before and after the Q3. Then we'll create our function with func Wu-Tang programmer. Just open and close parens since we're not passing anything in. And we'll do open and close curlies. First, I'll create my array of first names with let first names equals in between the square brackets. I'll copy those first names and paste them in. Then I'll say underneath this, let last names equals in between square brackets, copying and pasting the last names. 
Now remember, this is going to return a combined coder name, so I want to write my arrow after the double parentheses in Wu-Tang Programmer in the function line up here, and make sure that I pass back a string. Then down here, I'm just going to say return, and in between double quotes, string interp, and we'll pass in first names dot random element. Now remember, this is going to return back an optional, because it's possible if we called this on an array that had no values, we would get back nil. So we need to deal with a nil. To deal with that, I'm just going to put an exclamation point to force unwrap the value that we get back. Normally you want to be really careful when you're force unwrapping with an exclamation point, but as I mentioned in the question, it's okay to assume that you will have at least one first name element in the first names array, and one last names element in the last names array. Then I'll put a space after this string interp and do another string interp, and this will be last names dot random element exclamation point. Then I'm going to print out the line for me that's going to be print and in between quotes Prof Gallagher, comma, your Wu-Tang programmer name is... And remember, we want to surround the name in double quotes, and the way we do that is with an escaped character, which is backslash double quote. Then I'm going to follow that with string interp, which is backslash open and close parens. Then I'll put a backslash double quote after this, and that will indicate that whatever I have in my string interp is going to be surrounded by double quotes. And inside the string interp is just a call to Wu-Tang programmer, open and close parens. Let's shift return and see what we get. Prof Gallagher, your Wu-Tang programmer name is Terminal Breakpoint. What a great name. Now let's take a look at question four and five. So four is create a coder struct as follows. The struct should be named coder with two properties, name a string that will hold the student name, and coder name a string that's the result of the coder name returned by the Wu-Tang programmer function. So here we're just creating the coder struct, and then down in five we're just creating an empty array of coder structs. So creating the struct is super simple. We say struct, capital C, coder. Remember, we always capitalize. That's the convention when creating types, and a custom struct is a type. Open and close curlies, and we'll say var, name, colon, capital S, string. We'll declare, but we won't initialize these properties first. And var, coder name, lower camel case, colon, capital S, string. Now, I could initialize these simply by putting equals empty string after both of these properties, or really any default string value, but empty strings probably make the most sense. And let me show you the difference. If I head down here and enter coder to bring up the initializer, I can see that I've got two coder initializers in here. One that will give me parameters for name and coder name to enter, and the other which shows no parameters, which will use the values that I have in there as my default initializers, the empty strings. But now watch what happens if I get rid of the initialization in here, and these two properties are simply declared with no equals empty string after them. Since there are no defaults, then Coder only offers me the option to create a new Coder struct with name and Coder name. I have to pass in values for those two properties because they're not pre-initialized. Using either method would be fine for full credit for this answer. Now for question number five, let's create a variable named coders, which is going to be an array of coder structs. So we say just var lowercase coders. I'm going to say colon open square brackets with the coder struct inside here that declares the type and set that equal to an empty pair of square brackets. And just so you know, this other syntax would work as well, saying var coders and then setting it equal to in square brackets coder with an open and close parens afterward. My preference is the first method that I presented here. Now up next, we're going to create a unique list of coders. We're going to write a function named generate coder names, which accepts an array of strings, which should be called names and returns an array of coder structs. Now this function should go through each name in the names array that's passed to the function, and it should generate a new coder name using the Wu-Tang programmer function that we just created. Now we should also check to see if the name coder name that was generated has already been used. And if so, just to show that we're not repeating any names, I want to print out a statement that says repeated coder name and then name the coder name, try again. Again. And we should continue to generate a new coder name, checking to see if it's already in the list until we get a new non-repeated coder name. Once we get a non-repeated coder name, then we should create a new coder element using name and our new non-repeated coder name, and we should add that to the coder array that is going to be returned. So that returned array of coder structs should include the student name and a unique coder name for each student. Then we should call generate coder names by passing in the array Swift students and the value that returned should be assigned to the coders value, which is that empty array of coder structs that we created above. And at this point, we're not printing any elements of that coders array, the array of coder structs that we created. We're just creating the coders array and output that confirms that we had repeated values, but we haven't included those values in our final array of coder structs. And I show you an example down here that shows you roughly what the output should look like, recognizing that you're probably gonna have different repeated elements and a different number of elements each time you run. So let's solve this question. We'll set this up as Q6, printing out Q6. 
Then we'll create our function with func generate coder names in between parentheses. Our parameter that we're passing in is named names colon, and that is between brackets string and array of strings. And after the parens, we'll create our arrow because we're going to return a value, and that is going to be in between square brackets, capital C coder, an array of coders. Open and close curlies. Now there are a few ways to solve this. I'll show you what I think is the easier way, and then I'm going to show you a new technique after this. So I'm going to create two arrays. First var coders array colon, and that's in bracket capital C coder equals empty square brackets. This is eventually going to be the array of coders that I return. And then below this, I'll say var coders list colon and in between brackets is going to be an array of string equals empty brackets. This is going to hold the unique names of each coder name generated in that Wu-Tang format. So we'll go through all of our names. We'll find a unique name. When we found a unique name, then we'll add it to both the coder list and we'll use that unique name to create a new element of coder that we add to the coders array. So we'll do that with for name in names, curly braces, var coder name equals Wu-Tang programmer. Then we'll check to see if the Wu-Tang programmer is in our coder list. So we'll say while coder list dot contains coder name, open and close curlies. And if this is the case, then we've created a repeated coder name. So down inside this while loop, we're going to print out repeated name, colon, string, interp, coder name, comma, try again. And to try again, I'm just going to copy this coder name equals Wu-Tang programmer call and paste it down below. And this while loop will repeat over and over again until we get a unique coder name that hasn't been used already. And if that's the case, then outside the while loop below this curly, we're going to say coders list dot append coder name. That adds our new uniquely generated coder name to the coder list so we can compare it again the next time we go through the for loop. And then down below, we're going to generate a new coder element to add to our coders array, this array that we're going to return. So we'll say coders array dot append in between parens. We'll say capital C coder open parens. This will generate a new coder struct and we're going to pass in name and coder name. Then below this curly, which is when we're completely done with the for loop, we'll just return coders array. Then we'll call this by saying coders equals. So we want to fill in that empty coder array that we created with the results of a call to generate coder names, passing in Swift students as our names. And we see the results down here. We've got a bunch of repeated names that's expected, but we should also now have an array of coders that has unique names in there, one unique name per student. You can run this again. You should get different results. And that seems to work out great. Now, we haven't shown this in any of our lessons, but I do want you to know about the contains where method. Now, this will save us some code. Contains where returns a bool value if the comparison code that I include between the curlies is true. So let me show you how we can use this to write even better code. So I'm going to highlight this block of code here copy it, then comment it out with a slash, and then down below I'll paste the same block of code and we'll perform a bit of surgery. Now we won't need to keep this coder list array of unique coder names because contains where will let us compare elements inside the array of coder structs. So we can see if the generated coder name is already in the coder name property of any of the coder structs in our coders array. So I can delete this line here and let me show you the change that we're going to make. So instead of saying while coders list dot contains coder name, we can just say while coders array dot contains where, and we'll pass in a set of curly braces for a closure. That's going to be a line of code, just like with other types of functional programming. And in here, we're going to look to see if dollar sign zero dot coder name. Now that means the coder name property of any individual element of coder structs in coders array as we go through all of those elements of coders array double equals coder name, which is the coder name that we just generated from the call to Wu-Tang programmer. So if this is true, we should continue through the while loop, generating a new coder name until it's false, which means we have a new non-repeated coder name. Now, if that's the case, we don't use coder list anymore. So I'm going to delete this line. We don't need that. We simply create a new coder element and append it to our coders array. And that's it. We save two lines of code and we don't generate that extra string array. Contains where? Very handy. You can run this a few times on your own. You should see that it works perfectly. So now let's head over and complete this exercise by finishing question seven. So we're going to finish this off by generating the battle order for the Computer Science Society's first ever rap and hack throwdown where participants will sling freestyle rhythms in an epic rap battle, then hack a related app with a theme based on their flow. Students will perform in the order of the coders array that they just created. 
we need to randomize that array and print the battle order list with the performance slot beginning with the number one for the first performer, followed by the student name, AKA, and then their Wu-Tang style coder name. Now we want to print battle order. We want to randomize the list of coders. That needs to be done in place. Do not generate using an array of coder structs. Print a line for each student with a performance slot beginning with one, just to show you this is an example of what the output should look like. So let's finish this up. I'll add lines to indicate this is question seven, Q7. Then I'll print out battle order in all caps. And then we just say coders dot shuffle. Now remember shuffle shuffles in place, whereas shuffled will return an array. And we want to specifically shuffle in place. We want to change up that coder array that we just created. Then we'll go through all the indices and coders. So we'll say four I in zero dot dot less than symbol. So it's a half open range coders dot count. Count, open and close curlies, and we'll print out string interp dot space string interp, aka string interp. And the first string interp will be i plus one. Remember, we're zero indexed. The second one will be coders bracket i dot name, and the third one will be coders bracket i dot coder name. That's it, friends. Shift return to execute the code, and look at that. We've got our epic rap and hack battle showdown slot list. And of course, if you're wondering, can I do this with four each? The answer is, of course you could. We simply need to do this with a range first. You may or may not think this makes your code a little bit tougher to read, but we're going to show this anyway. I commented out my shuffle. I'm going to add that back, but I just say the range. So that's going to be in parentheses, zero dot dot less than symbol coders dot count dot for each open and close curlies. Then I'll just grab this entire print statement up here, paste it down below, and I'll replace the I with dollar sign zero. Execute this with a shift return below, and you have a one-liner that takes care of printing. Nice work, Swifter. The genius would think you're a genius. Continue to hack.